Hello, David Harper of Bionic Turtle, and a brief illustration of how to calculate the cumulative probability of default on a risky bond. For FRM candidates, I consider this a fabulous exercise for you to know because you have to take three steps in order to do it, each of which is a learning outcome for the exam. And so here's the idea as an input or as a set of assumptions that we would be given or could observe, we know the term structure for both the riskless asset and the risky bond. In this case in green, the US Treasury bond or bill or note is the riskless asset and this is the theoretical term structure of spot rates. So we have a one year spot rate and a two year spot rate. And then for the corporate bond we also have a term structure and we would expect its term structure to be above the risk-free term structure. So we're given those spot rates for year one and for year two and the question is what is the cumulative probability of default? What does that mean? That means what is the probability that as of the end of the second year the risky bond will have defaulted? That means it could have defaulted in either year one or in year two. The marginal probability of default is the probability it will default in year one. Year two has its own marginal probability of default, but the cumulative probability of default is, is what is the probability we get through both years with a default in either year. So to do this exercise, I said there are three steps, and I've color-coded them. Step one in green, step two in blue, step three in pink, and you can see our answer here is going to be 3.7%. The first step in green is to calculate the implied forward rates. That means here in yellow is the same spot rates that are already reflected up here in, this, in these two term structures. The forward rate, the one year forward rate, is the one year rate starting at the end of the first year and going to the end of the second year. So it's implied by the spot rates. And so our first step is to calculate that implied forward rate. And this is all from Anthony Saunders. And so we can use this formula, which an FRM candidate absolutely has to know. And that is that there's a no arbitrage idea here that the two year spot rate, that's on the left, should be equal to the one year spot rate multiplied by the one year forward rate. As an investor I should be indifferent to on the left investing in two years or investing in one year and rolling over into the forward. If we rearrange this you can see the forward rate becomes a function of the two year spot rate and the one year spot rate and I've put that formula right in here and you can see if I go right up here and start from scratch I can take one plus the two year spot rate, square that, divide it by one plus the one year spot rate and subtract one and I get the implied forward rate. By the way, common question I get, this is Anthony Saunders and this formula in right here is annual compounding. John Hull uses continuous compounding and in a way that's more convenient in this case we're not going to use it but let me just show you how easy that is and for continuous compound we solve that implied forward we just take the two year spot multiplied by two and subtract the one year spot and we get a continuously compounded rate that's going to be very close okay but we're not going to use that now I do the same idea uh, same formula to compute the one year forward rate for the corporate bond in this case I get a little bit above nine percent so we've calculated the implied forward rates so we've done the first step now we go to the second step and that is to compute the marginal probabilities of default I covered this in a previous screencast the idea with the marginal probability of default is what's the probability it will default in that year that we've already looked at is given by this formula here because the probability of repayment is given by this term right here in brackets that's this line here and so one minus the probability of repayment is the probability of default 
So you can see to get this probability of repayment in the first year, I just go one plus I is my risk free rate or treasury rate and I divide by one plus my risky or corporate bond rate and I get about there's some rounding here about a 99 percent probability of repayment implied by the term structure on the one year and here I do the same based on the implied forward rates and I just take one minus those to get a an approximately one percent marginal probability of default in the first year and an approximately 2.8 percent marginal probability of default in the second year. So it's really important to understand what this marginal probability of default means and note we got it with the implied forward rates and this marginal probability of default is just the probability that the bond will default exactly in the second year. So now we can go to the third step finally and compute the cumulative probability of default and this is somewhat intuitive we only need these marginal the series of marginal probability of defaults first notice here in parens what we do is we calculate the cumulative probability that there will be no default what is the cumulative probability there will be no default well it's the probability that the bond gets through all of the years without a default so we just multiply the probability that there will be a repayment in the first year times the probability that there will be a repayment in the second year if there were ten years we would multiply them all together in a string because we're interested in cumulatively the probability that they all repay every year gets repaid in a jointly so that's in in principle we have here in prens we have the probability of uh, cumulatively that all of the years will be repaid and that means that the cumulative probability of default is just one minus that it's the probability that that does not happen if that does not happen that means in any given one of the years there was a default and so I'll move that formula out of the way and you can see that really is, I'll start in the prints here with a fresh, I want the probability that there will be a repayment in the first year times the probability that there will be a repayment in the second year and I could go on and on for each year I only have two years here and what I get there by 96.3 is the probability that the bond B will be repaid in both years and so that means a default during any year is given by one minus that number or 3.7 percent so you can see that's how finally we've applied this third step to get the cumulative probability of default so that's the exercise I hope this was helpful this is David Harper the bionic turtle thanks for your time mm -hmm.